It's been a long journey. Remember? Remember our pact, Father? I remember it well. Son. his old enemy one last time oh true lord tell me the exact place in which you desire to be reborn i understand <laughs> Enochian, the language of Satan. Miserable traitors, now receive your just rewards for your disloyalty, betrayer. He is mine. May you and your spawn be damned. Yeah, that's a pretty rad design for death. Wow. Yep, after three games, we finally get to fight Zobek. So it's at this point I'm going to be showing off something special. Because we've been waiting for this. Uh, there's a move I have not shown off yet. It is called Blizzard. It is the equivalent of uh, Explosive Earthquake for the Void Sword. And it has... Uh, a, a couple of particular quirks to it, but for this to happen, we need to make sure that uh, there's a cutscene at the end of this phase, and we need to make sure that the last hit we have on Zobek is a blizzard. It takes a bit of setting up on him, but we're going to pull this off here. All right, here we go. Going into this cutscene, we have to end it with blizzard. I'll exterminate the filthy lineage of the Belmonts. Chamberlains, let the banquet begin! Oh great, more weeping angels. Don't blink. <laughs> Take his soul. So Blizzard normally has the effect of freezing anything that it touches. This is the Blizzard glitch. Because we ended that previous cutscene with a blizzard attack, everything will now be affected as if it has been hit by blizzard. Oh. Even though we're not doing the attack. Oh. Also, this is the fury shield. Uh, instead of fully attacking, uh, absorbing damage, it absorbs some damage. And the rest of the damage is taken into the shield and then it explodes outward as an attack. Oh, that's cool. Also, in order to get rid of the infinite wave of zombies, we have to uh, use Chaos Bomb on those statues up above. I imagine that would be a lot harder if you weren't just freezing every zombie. <laughs> so the Blizzard Glitch just always hits. The Blizzard Glitch also works on bosses. Fucking Christ. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. Welcome to the ninth circle, motherfucker. <laughs> Indeed. This is so satisfying. I'll exterminate the filthy lineage of the Belmonts. Oh my god, it just hits again. Yeah. Basically, as long as you're physically touching him, 
uh, anything will be affected as if it's been hit by Blizzard. I'm guessing this uh, phase transition doesn't turn it off. Yep, Almost, there it is. There are there are a few very specific things that turn it off. Um, I don't remember offhand. The only thing I know for sure that turns it off is exiting the game. Oh, uh, casting Blizzard again won't turn it off. Uh, it might. I'll have to check. Cause I I, I imagine the game will just like do its normal checks and turn off Blizzard. Uh, you know this this contact Blizzard. Uh, if you just use it again normally. Well, one of the other ways is to uh, ride out to Activision. <laughs> but, you know, that's a bit of an OP strat. So Zobek has a whip scythe. Uh, it be, yeah, basically, it's you know, he has his usual scythe, but it's a whip now. It's not doing much. I was considering doing a fair fight against him, but no, nah, this is too fun. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very happy I decided to wait until now to introduce this. Thought you're about to use that dodo. <laughs> no, you actually can't use dodos anymore. The, uh, both the the dodos and the seal of Alistair become impossible to use once you've. Backed out your moves. And, oh, really? Uh, and found and found all the collectibles. Because there's no point. Huh? And this is the final section. Uh, Zobek slowly regenerates his health, but you could probably figure out what we're supposed to do here. separate to find out where the last acolyte went yes father we need to hurry I'll let you know if I find him Next time, we will uh, finish the game. The main story, at least. Nice! We're, we're almost there. We're like three or four videos away from, from being completed. I'm in the process of editing the DLC videos at the moment, but video 20 will be the last main story video. That's... This, this, is, this is a lot to uh, unpack, because we're never going to hear the dulcet tones of Sir Patrick Stewart again. Yeah, I, I think he we've we've shattered his larynx as well as the rest of his body. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have a leg to stand on. I, I just hope Zobek's parts aren't just gonna like melt and then come back together and reform. <laughs> I, I think with climate change the way it is, I don't think he's gonna be coming back together anytime soon. He'll melt before then. Mm. There's there there's definitely something satisfying about this though. He has been well and truly iced. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> oh, I I am 
somehow relieved to be this close to the end of the of the main story, but it it feels like they really wanted to go out with a bang, you know? Like Yeah. It's a lot to take in, but it's so good. Yeah, I originally I had I, I had said that there was a a slight possibility that that there was more to the story, but I, I went back and looked at some of the the E three trailers, and as far back as E three of twenty thirteen, they were advertising this as the grand finale of the Lords of Shadow saga, and this was at a point where the release date was intended to be Q four of twenty thirteen. Uh, sure. Right. This was before the six month delay, so it seems as though they were intending to end the story with with this title, which is strange given certain aspects of the ending that we will see. It it feels a lot more open ended than it should, given that it's meant to be the finale. I will say that. Do you feel like that's a time constraint thing, or that that's a how they wrote it to begin with thing? It might be both. I feel it might also be that. Konami decided that they just weren't happy with how the series was going, possibly. Yeah, I was going to say, like, a lot of that might depend, too, on, like, if Konami was, uh, I guess, reception to the sales of the first game? Yeah, that, that is possible. I mean, the uh, I don't have the sales numbers offhand of the, of the first game, but... Uh, like, I'm sure it sold pr- pretty okay, but I don't know if it sold enough to make Konami happy, considering, you know... Games like Metal Gear sell silly numbers, but that still doesn't make Konami mm-hmm. happy. Yeah, this this was around the time that uh, that Konami's mobile division was kicking everyone else's ass. Yeah, it it was about the time that Konami was leaving some stuff unfinished. Yeah, Metal Gear Solid Five. <clears throat> you know, so yeah, it this was a tumultuous time for the company, and even having a third party group working on on one of their franchises was up in the air so uh it's it's hard to comment till i see it on the plus side we've killed death so all we have left is the the acolyte and we got to get satan back into the picture somehow well he can squeeze in we'll, we'll pencil him in i i'm sure that jason isaacs needs to eat so he'll show up for the final boss at least to, you know who knows we have we have that to look forward to. <laughs> we've we've lost Sir Patrick Stewart, but at least we got Jason Isaacs waiting in the wings. Uh, Substitute yeah. one ham for another. 